When most people think about a set of custom house plans, they're probably thinking about just drawings. A drawing set is a way for us to order and organize information, but it's not the only means we have for doing that. So I want to walk through all the documents that I create for a typical custom house project so you can see all the thought that goes into it. Now, it's certainly possible to build a home or let's say this studio from a set of just a few drawings you know floor plans elevations probably need a site plan just to get a building permit the scope of the project is much larger let's say it's a civic building or it's a really complicated residence the set for that might be on the order of 100 to 200 sheets depending on how big the project is you know a typical drawing set for me may be 35 to 40 sheets of drawings the difference between the set of drawings that's four sheets and the set of drawings that's 40 sheets is the level of control that you're able to exert over the process. The more you draw, the more control you have over it. Now, obviously there's a balance you need to strike here. If I were to go ahead and draw every last corner in detail in a building, that could get quite expensive. So you need to decide what's important and draw the things that are appropriate to the particular project that you're working on. So we have our drawing set here. It's about 35, 40 drawings at the moment. And we always start off with the very general and we move to the specific. Any written word takes precedence over a drawn line in the same way that a large scale detail might take precedence over a smaller scale detail. So the opening sheet here really is just to orient the viewer to our drawing conventions, symbol legend, abbreviations, and index of all the documents that we're providing to the contractor. Now the opening sheets are generally site plan, landscape drawings, overview drawings. These are taken from the sort of 30,000 foot level we're going to use these to locate the project on site and talk about the scope of work. This is a remote site, so we don't have, we're not really close to the property lines, but if you're in a more urban site or you have existing structures, things to orient around, you'll probably have property lines to make sure that you're complying with zoning ordinances. We have some setbacks that we're showing here, but basically we're trying to locate the building in three dimensional space, vertically and horizontally. And we're gonna take this drawing and send it to our surveyor. And they're going to actually physically locate it on the site and they'll set a benchmark. Generally, we're using this to set the big moves of the project, how we access it, how we're bringing in power and water, all of our utilities, sewer, things like that. We're gonna use it to show topography modification and you know any landscape or plantings. And we're gonna get into this later, but you can see I don't have any details on the driveway. I'm gonna use other documents in the set to really describe performance requirements that we have for these individual elements here. So as we zoom in, we come to the plan series of documents. So architectural plans come in many shapes and sizes. Obviously, this is the foundation plan. We have floor plans, we have reflected ceiling plans, roof plans. Plan is just a horizontal cut through the building. Generally, it's done at the four foot level. So we'll have one for every level of the building. And we'll also have a roof plan in this particular project. They're generally drawn at a quarter inch equals a foot. So if the site plan was drawn at say a 16th inch equals a foot, this one bumps up the scale. So now we're zooming in and we're getting to see how we're laying out doors and windows. And it's enough space for us to start dimensioning things like partition walls and doors and windows, but it's not large enough that we can accurately describe exactly how we want the structure built. So we need another system for ordering and organizing that information. And you'll see all of the sort of red annotations here, all the symbols refer out to other documents in the plan set. So here we have window tags, we have door tags, we have wall tags, we have elevations, we have section markers, we have detail bubbles. And each one of these, as someone's looking at the plan and they're trying to orient themselves to the project, they can find further information at each one of these places. And we're gonna use those to kind of walk through the entire set here. Plans often look very busy because we're layering on this information. We're treating it almost as an index to say, oh, if you wanna know what the elevation of this wall looks like, go to one on A5.1. And so the A1 series are our plans here. And you can see we have one for the upper level too. We're gonna to start following along some of these detail markers and that's gonna bring us uh, beyond the roof plan to the exterior elevations. Exterior elevations are drawn at one quarter scale. Again, quarter inch equals a foot. And they're simply head on views of every single side of the building. Even if there's just a tiny little jog in there, we're gonna elevate every one of those planes. And what this does is starts to render the building in three dimensions. We start to understand the proportion of doors and windows and how to locate things vertically in space. We can get to see how it's interacting with the localized topography. We can also start to see that some of these notes are calling out materials here. But 
Again, at a quarter scale, it's not really enough information for us to know exactly how to construct that wall. So for that, we need to follow on a vertical section through the space, and that's what these indicators are. And we're gonna follow that into the wall section series. So that's our next series of drawings. And we've elevated all of the structures for the project. Here, this is our A4 series. There's also an A3 series, which is a building section. A building section, again, is done generally at a quarter scale. So they're just smaller versions of this, what we're looking at here. And that is a vertical cut through the space. Now this drawing is starting to very precisely describe all of the systems and assemblies that make up this exterior wall. So here, if we look at this annotation, it says typical exterior wall construction. Come over to the construction notes and we can see exactly what the layers of that system are. But it's generic in the sense that like if we call out insulation or if we're calling out a vapor barrier beneath the concrete slab. We're not saying that's a 15 mil polyethylene vapor barrier uh, made by Raven Industries. We're not calling that out here. We're calling it the generic term, a vapor barrier. And then we're going to describe exactly what that is when we get into our specifications. And we'll get there in just a few minutes. The beauty of that is if we change our mind, let's say we wanna to go to a thicker mill thickness because there's a radon problem here. We can change it in one spot. It's called out in one spot in the specifications. It's not called out in 15 different locations on the drawings. And you'll see that starts to repeat itself as a theme throughout the whole project too. Now you can see we're calling out very specific locations and in details and assemblies, how it meets the ground. We're stacking up a boulder wall here. Well, we have some performance criteria that we want to meet here. We want to separate our soils from the crushed stone. So we're doing that with landscape fabric. We have foundation details and drainage details and deck details. We want to describe how this meets the ground, how it meets the sky, what the eave details are, where to mount the structural elements. So we're using this drawing to do a lot of the heavy lifting when it comes to our roof and floor and wall assemblies, anything related to the exterior envelope. These are drawn at one inch, so this is plenty of room to describe that. And you can see here with the master bedroom post details, this is another snapshot, a location that we really need to describe very specifically. We need to show the detailing of this knife plate and how the LVLs are meant to be threaded into the tenon of this post. So we've drawn a detail here. Now, in the same way that we have exterior elevations, we also have interior elevations. These are drawn at half inch equals a foot, so a little bit larger than the exterior elevations, and we're using these to show things like cabinetry and accessories, equipment like the wood stove or a ladder that we're mounting to the wall. All of these items are hard to show in a plan view in any meaningful way. And also, we're locating things like light switches and lights and this is a TV location, so they wanna add a TV here possibly in the future, so we need to locate where the conduit is going and how high we run that conduit. We may need to add blocking in the walls so that we can come and attach the bracket at a later point. Same holds true for all of this information that we're describing in these interior elevations. And at half inch equals a foot, there's enough room to start detailing and dimensioning things that we couldn't do on a quarter inch floor plan. So like what this shower pan is, or what the tile layout is, or how we want to center certain things. Now, as we start to chase down some of the information that we're, we're layering on these larger scale plans here, if we look at what P3 is, we'll come to the plumbing schedule, and we can see in the plumbing schedule, P3 is the shower, and the shower is comprised of all of these different plumbing fixtures. So we have a valve, we have a shower head, hand shower, a drain, you know, we want to talk about what the finishes are on those, and then what the rough-ins are for each one of those. So we're just calling out this information so that as the plumber is looking through this and they're getting ready to you know, set blocking in the wall, we know exactly what we're setting in here and what the rough valve assemblies are and where we need to mount them. Each one of these refers out to a different series of documents. And if we chase some of these down, you can see this larger scale plan references these interior elevations to the side. So if we're looking at this detail four on this sheet, we can see what the tile layout is on this wall. So it's kind of a randomized tile pattern and I'm specking out exactly how I want that to be and how I want it to feel and then we're lining up our recessed shelf in the tile layout so that needs a certain height and all of this is information that we need to front load the decision because I want to be able to say that these rope hooks should be centered on this opening as we walk in here everything should align it shouldn't just be haphazard or you know left to chance now, some people do separate large scale plans for these bath spaces or say a stair. Um, and so that would be in the A7 series. I haven't chosen to do that here. I've just collaged them along with the interior elevations.
So next up in the drawing series are the door and window elevations and details, but I'm circling back to the plans because doors and windows are complex enough that drawings alone aren't enough to convey to the contractor all the information that we need to give them. So this is a good time to talk about schedules. I want to focus in on the doors here for a moment. If we look at doors, they're scheduled based on the rooms that they serve. So you can see for the entry mudroom 101, we have two doors, 101A and 101B. And in order to find more information out about these doors, we're gonna come over to the door schedule. A door schedule is simply an accounting of all the information related to every single door. And that includes the type, the size, the manufacturer, the finish. We have a hardware set, and we'll come back to that in a minute and an elevation, and then any sort of custom notes on that. So if we come back to the elevations in the drawing set, our window and door elevations, we navigate to slab J, we can see it's an interior wood pocket door, we can see information about it, and importantly, we can start to note that there are details associated with this pocket door. So the details, let's move to the detail sheet here. We can see the section at the opening and the section at the pocket, and this has very specific details related to that. And if we come over here and we can see that we're calling out what the sliding door track hardware is, we say a sliding door hardware, see hardware schedule. So let's open the hardware schedule. And if we scroll down to hardware set eight, we can see that's a pocket door and it's a privacy set. And then this is all the information that's related to that privacy set. So you can see the deeper we dig, the more information we find out about this door. Windows are very similar. So we have an A1 and an A2 window. They look virtually the same on the plan here. Well, let's dig into that and see what we have here. So we come back to our door and window elevation sheet and we can see the window type A1 and A2. The difference between those two is one's operable and one is a picture unit. And then as we dig further into this, we can see there are details associated with that. One, two, and three on A6.2. So we have our head detail, our sill detail, and our jam detail related to that. And this will follow on for all of the units in the entire project. So returning to the plan, there are other schedules that we can reference just from this floor plan. If we look at this symbol here, this is a wall type symbol, and you'll notice that we're tagging the interior walls with these little symbols here. And that just describes to the contractor how to build this wall. So if we look at this wall type C here, from the wall type schedule, we can see that wall type C is an interior two by six LSL wall. You know, this is a bathroom wall, we're putting tile on it, so we need it to be dimensionally really stable. That's why we're framing it with LSLs. We're not using dimensional lumber like we might elsewhere. Uh, you can see wall type F, you know, this is an interior exposed two by six cedar framed wall. It has cedar slats on it, so that has a specific detail. Anything that's different or special will be called out in the wall type schedule here. And we do this for interior walls only because the exterior walls are handled by the wall section. So some of the other schedules we might have, we have an appliance schedule, electrical schedule, a finish schedule, you know, window schedule we talked about, plumbing schedule. All of these schedules help to paint additional context to our drawings and specifications. Now we're gonna round out the last drawings in the architectural set with our electrical drawings. Instead of ceiling plans, I typically do an electrical or a power plan. This shows all the light fixtures switching. I have a separate video on that, you can check that out. Uh, but even these start to reference other schedules. So if we look at these lights here, the D1 light, and we look at our uh, D1 light here in the schedule, it says exactly what it is. It says the model name, what color it is, what, how we're gonna lamp it. And then the electrician can go through this drawing with every one of those fixtures and say, okay, I have 25D fixtures and four A fixtures. And you know, ideally they're gonna find all the information referenced at some point in this set of documents. So if we circle back to the site plan, I said in the beginning, you know, I don't have all drawings and details for everything in this set. And one of the ways we use the set of specifications here is to call out some of those systems that we haven't called out elsewhere. So this is called an outline specification and an outline specification is just sort of a general accounting for all of the different divisions that might make up uh, the construction of a home. So there are 16 CSI divisions and that's what my spec follows. So we move here again from the general to the very specific. So our opening page here is about general requirements and I think of this document as 
really a living document, something that's gonna change and evolve over time, but it's kind of a catalog of my favorite products and systems and sort of best practices. And as those performance criteria change, say for a fresh air ventilation system, I can just update it in one place. It just ensures that I'm delivering a consistent product to my client every single time. Now say I'm the site contractor and I wanna price out this job and I need to know how how I actually build this driveway and what it consists of. I'm gonna to come to division two, which talks about site construction. I get to see how the site is supposed to be prepared, what we need to do there, what I do for excavation there, also what I'm gonna provide for drainage or blasting, how I'm gonna bed all of my utilities. And finally, we're gonna come down to the driveway. We're gonna, it's gonna talk about the materials that we're using, what's acceptable. We're gonna talk about the road base and how we actually install that base, what, what kind of lifts it's installed in, you know, it's a 12 inch lift or a six inch lift, whatever it is. And then if there's any paving on it or what the finished surface is. So it's all called out and specified here. And that saves me from having to, you know, cut details and show this in a drawing. I can just list the performance criteria here. Now, if we come back to interior elevations, you know, we look at cabinetry. We were talking about this earlier. If we want to, you know, we could come and cut sections through every one of these cabinets, or we could develop a set of criteria that we're designing to here, you know, and I have a special section in the spec that's dedicated toward wooden cabinets. And I can talk about what kind of hardware I want to use and what the pulls are and what the door construction is and you know all the sort of framing materials that are included with it, what the finishes are. If there's special hardware for bookshelves, I can list all of that out in here. So this, is, this document really is meant to cover all of the bases. Now, if you're listening to this and thinking, this is just a ton of information to have just for a simple house. What I tell my clients is this, anything that we don't draw, delineate, add to a schedule or a specification is a decision that we're choosing to defer to somebody else, whether that's the contractor pricing the project or someone in the field. And because I'm a control freak, I'd prefer to make those decisions myself. Generally, in my experience, when I show up on site and I haven't drawn or detailed something and someone's made the decision for me, it's generally not the same decision that I would make. And that's no fault of their own. They don't have the same you know, domain knowledge that I would have. I've been working on this project with my client. I know their expectations. I know the design language of the project. Generally, when someone else is making the decision, they're gonna fall back on previous experience, what they've done in the past, what's worked for them before, and what's easiest. You know, let's be honest, that's, that happens most of the time. And so if we're deferring decisions to other people, that's what we're gonna get. A house is filled with millions of decisions. So even if you choose not to draw them or incorporate them into your drawing and spend architectural fee on that, those are still decisions that need to be made by somebody. So all I'm doing is choosing to front load those decisions and make them myself. So while we may spend more fee upfront designing and drawing things, it's actually a more efficient process in the long run because we're able to give the contractor the information they need to accurately price the project so the client knows what it's gonna cost. The client's assured that all the design decisions that we've made together throughout the design process will actually be there in the finished product. The subtrades know what's expected of them, so it makes coordination and sequencing flow more smoothly. And we can track the project on budget and on schedule throughout the whole process because everything is known up front. I hope this was helpful and uh, you know I hope you enjoyed looking through my progress set of drawings. Mm -hmm.